these guys are so much power hungry. What do they do when they're no longer a president, a minister, you know, having private cars? What do they do? So again, we need to have an exit strategy so that they understand the value. You have served, mm -hmm. well or not well, but we need you now to be a mentor, a coach, a father, an elder, so that we can be able to get the next generation of leader. What kind of legacy do you want to leave? Most of them don't want to leave legacy. They leave vacancies, not legacies. What kind of footprint? Most of them don't leave footprints. They leave bum prints. But hey, said. Yes, sir, I will stick to English then. That's fine. <laughs> no, we can, can, we can mix a bit here, but just, just keep in mind that the audience is global. And with, with the rent depreciating, we don't want to miss out on those dollars. And yeah, those but 80% is still going to come from South Africa. That's fine. True. Let's go for it. <laughs> Welcome to Something Nice with Dinano. We have a leadership expert today. Dr. David Mulapo. Let me just give a, a short introduction while you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Welcome back if you are a returning viewer. He's a leadership expert. An expert in communication, emotional intelligence. He's authored a couple of books. Maybe a couple is an understatement here. A number of books. One that stands out for me is the 10 exciting keys to success. If you are not growing, you are dying. And he's a change expert. Actually, there's another book right here that I saw that has a quote that I'd want us to talk about. It says, choose to change. Dr. David Mulapo. Welcome, Papa. How are you doing? Dinano, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. And uh, during these trying times, can I also honor you and the great work that you are doing, not only for the country, but for the world. Thank you very much. We spoke on the phone a couple of days back, wanting to talk about leadership and who counsels the leader or who advises the leader or who helps the leader when they are going through hardships, right? But now there's been so many developments that have happened in our country. There are so many things that are happening in our continent with COVID-19. In South Africa, we've just had a bit of civil unrest, not a bit, <laughs> a, a days of civil unrest. Now, this took me back to the work that you've been doing when I picked up on you early, early 2000s, late 1990s. So we're not talking to a, I'll use a common phrase in South Africa, a small boy here. We're talking to a big man. Who, who's been doing this thing for decades. What got you into this space in Datemulapo of talking about leadership and the need for excellence in leadership? How did you get into this? Thank business? you so much for that question. I got into leadership by default. I always tell people, people say, well, some guys are born leaders, some guys, you know, they are made leaders with me just by default. And what do you mean default? Because if you want to be an effective leader, you must be an effective follower. So I have served some powerful people in the business world, the corporate world, the church world, the government world, the NGO space. And I realized that there is a leadership bankruptcy in all these areas. And instead of complaining, instead of blaming, I took the baton. What do you mean took the baton? I realized if I wanted to be a leader, there are three people I needed. A coach, and I'll explain the difference. A mentor, a counselor, or a therapist. A coach. I begin to surround myself with people who can see my blind spots. And a coach, if you are playing soccer, a coach will see things that you do not see. But Dinamo, here's the problem. Are you willing to listen to what the coach is saying? Because remember, you don't see what the coach is saying. So already right there, equality, if you want to be coach, you must be willing to learn, to submit, to listen, and to do what the coach is saying. But in addition to having a coach, you need a mentor. Mm -hmm. A mentor walks alongside you. A mentor is not impressed by your accomplishment. In fact, I joke, I say a mentor must be a tall mentor, you know, because okay. I say, Dinamo, you've done this, Mulap, you've done this, what's the next step? 
torment or as in torment you yeah, while torment mentoring you. you. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Torment you so that they bring out that greatness outside of you. You know, yes, you have accomplished something great. You got this award great. You have reached a million people great. But what about the rest of the continent? What about the townships? What about people who are unemployed? Young people, whatever. You know, they're always challenging you. But the third person is what we call a therapist, a counselor. Because you're going to realize the importance of self-care, that you can never give out of an empty cup. So as a leader, you also need to have what we call half time so that you can be able to learn, to glean, to reflect, so that you can come back even stronger than before. So when I notice that a lot of leaders, that's why I say there's a leadership bankruptcy, they don't have coaches, they don't have mentors, they don't have therapists and counselors, no wonder most of them make bad decisions particularly in the continent, where some of them become appointed lifetime leaders. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they are rusted. They need to let go. But it's difficult for them to let go because what do they do thereafter? So when I saw that gap, I thought, you know what? Maybe it is something that God has raised me for so that I can inspire, I can challenge, I can enable and empower the next generation of leaders, learning from their generous, learning from their old, mature generations. And that's why I embarked on that journey in the early 90s. And guess what? I'm still on that journey even today. But for you to get to that space of understanding leadership, being in positions of leadership, being in a position of looking and analyzing and finding that, hey, there's something lacking with our leaders. You must have had your own coaches. You must have had people who mentored you you, I don't know, uh, maybe you do have someone who, who deals with your, your, your mental health, who does therapy when it comes to these things. Growing up, who played that role of leadership in your life personally? I like that question because sometimes when we talk about coaches, mentors, therapists, people look at the latter part of my life. Yes, the John Maxwells of this world, the T.D. Jakes of this world, but wait a minute. Things don't end wrong. They start wrong. So for me, that question you, you pose is powerful because my mother, my father, my great father, my next door neighbors, those are local people who played an important role. Unfortunately, they are not known. Unfortunately, they do not have PhDs mm -hmm. passing high school with difficulties. You know, Unfortunately, they are not on television or in the media. So their wisdom that we have from our upbringing, our, our gogo, our grannies, whatever. So those were my coaches, mentors, and therapists. And that is why I'll forever be grateful to them. By the way, I still, even today, the so-called Dr. David Malapo, spend time with the grannies in the communities, in the villages, in the townships. Still ask a lot of questions mm. because those, that kind of wisdom, you can't get it from any universities. It's called the University of Life. That's where my upbringing is. Hence, even where people think, well, you're a top guy, you're a high flyer, I never forget where I come from. Mm. Because those were my foundational years that have made David Malapo to be who David Malapo is today. A lesson or two that you picked up growing up from your father, your mother, Ukoko, that have helped you in your journey of becoming lead. Because you've, you've learned some of the top businesses and companies in South Africa. Just to name a few, I know you've been involved with the United Nations in South Africa, the Billy Graham Foundation, South African Airways, Lexmark, Clientel Life, Dimension Data, the list is endless. What were some of those lessons that you took from your childhood growing up that you've managed to implement in those leadership roles in these powerful big corporates? Here are some. Always be humble. That means servant leadership. Number two, when you're at the top, reach out to someone. Because when you're at the top, never ever look down upon the people who are struggling. Because one day, you may fail and fall and need them to lift you up. Mm. Number three, don't prejudge. You never know. I'm speaking to Dinamo now. Mm. I'm speaking to thousands of people there. I don't have a clue who's listening to this program. Because that particular person can be a destiny helper for David Malapo. One phone call can change your life. So don't prejudge because you never know. Number four, when you have made it in life, never forget the next generation of leaders. That is why 80% of my time 
and the I can team's time is focusing on the next generation of leaders because we have screwed up, we have messed up in a lot of other areas so that these younger people, when we pass the baton or the baton, they must do better than us. Then the last one, which is very, very important, don't live a life of success. Mm. Live a life of significance because success is all about you. Significance is all about the other person. In what you've just said, I like it because it's, it's, it's stuff that I've seen you embody and live. I met you during a book launch of uh, Bishop Mapong. You were just sitting behind me and I just chatted you up. Usually people who have reached these levels in life has, have a tendency of being aloof. Asked for your number, you didn't question much, you just gave me your number and you're like, hit me up, let's talk. And we managed to make it happen. So I appreciate, because sometimes you talk to people from different spheres of life in leadership, and you, 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 you find this attitude of being aloof, of being detached, even the way you speak, <laughs> which, which means that you're a person on the ground, right? A person who grew up ekasi kwatema. So let me commend you for that. But now let's get to the crux of the matter. We talk about issues in our continent, talk about issues in our country, we talk about issues globally. There seems to be failure in terms of what's happening with COVID-19. Africa has not come up with vaccines. Africa is struggling with a lot of things. South Africa is going through unrest. Is it a lack of leadership? What needs to happen? for our countries to overcome these challenges that we are facing. Thanks for those kind words. Uh, let's shoot straight. Remember, a leader is not revealed. I mean, a leader is not made in a crisis. Okay. A leader is revealed in a crisis. The problem with Africa is that we are always reactive. We're not proactive. Mm. And the problem is when you become reactive, you become inactive, and end up becoming radioactive. Poisonous, that's what it is. We don't please, plan. Please repeat that. Please, I think that's important. We are not proactive as leaders. Mm -hmm. And that's the challenge. And if you are not proactive, it means you are reactive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the problem with when you are reactive, you become inactive. You get paralyzed mm -hmm. and end up becoming radioactive. You become poisonous. poisonous. Mm. And when you're poisonous, what do we do? We begin to blame it's the West, it's the whites, and things like that. Remember this powerful statement. When you blame someone, you give up the power to change. The advent of the fourth industrial revolution, a couple of years ago, we knew that we now need to focus on our young people. Africa Union has got what we call a 2063 action, but it's a lot of older people. There's not even one young person there. Most of the guys will be retired or dead. Dead. I didn't want to say dead. I just wanted to, because I'm a Christian now, you know, you. That to be with the Lord, you know, but they'll be dead. <laughs> so right now, there's no strategic planning session for the next generation of leaders. We don't go down there and find out what are the needs of young people. What careers are going to be needed in the future so that we stop being consumers? Leaders are people who are always looking ahead. Here's my definition. An effective dynamic leader is the one who will identify tomorrow's problems and solve them today. I repeat, an effective dynamic leader is the one that will identify tomorrow's problems and solve them today. We know right now in South Africa, the National Development Plan, we know in 2030 where we want to go. Africa Union, we know in 2063 where we want to go. But what are we doing now every day, our daily agenda, so that we begin to prepare our educational system we now need to move things into the ICT space, the information technology space. What are we doing to now change and disrupt our curriculum? What are we doing to develop the next generation of leaders? Because we realize PhD in Sizulu, in Tsotsital, whatever, is not going to get the job done. We now need to begin to revive the TVETs, the technical vocational educational system. Because as a director of Dimension Data, I knew that we cannot have the BSCs of this world in technology that are given by the university. Three, four years, afterwards, we still need to reskill and upskill our young people. 
sports. We don't have the time. Mm. So now from high school, as part of the careers, we need to begin to reskill, upskill our young people because the younger generation are sharp. Unlike us, the BBTs, born before technologies, they catch technology fast. So why don't we fast track them so that we become part of the global world? Mm. The most billionaires today are young people. Some of them have never even finished high school or universities. But what is Africa doing so that we have an African solution so that that solution can be able to be a blessing, not only to Africa, but to the world? So a leader must always be proactive, not reactive. You mentioned vaccines. We knew that we we're going to have vaccines. Malaria. We need vaccines. Tuberculosis. We need vaccines. HIV AIDS. We need vaccines. But what have we done the last 20, 25 years? Again, is this dependence mentality that everything good and perfect comes from abroad? Nonsense. The Bible says every good and perfect thing comes from above. What does it mean? It means God has imbued us with potential, with talents, with creativity, with innovation. But the problem is our governments, our corporates, do we create an environment conducive so that we can bring that talent, so that innovation, entrepreneurship can come up? If we have developed the Elon Musk of this world and a lot of other people, surely we can do it. We just need a determined will so that our next generation can have a better shot more than us as the older people. Do you think there's willingness from those that are in power to bring about these changes and these developments so that they can get out of those positions of power and allow young ones, creative minds that are exposed to these technologies to bring the changes that are needed to take our people? Our D- Dinamo, the problem is we have never given hope to our existing leaders. These guys are so much power hungry what do they do when they're no longer a president, a minister, you know, having private cars? What do they do? So again, we need to have an exit strategy so that they understand the value. You have served, mm-hmm. well or not well, but we need you now to be a mentor, a coach, a father, an elder, so that we can be able to get the next generation of leader. What kind of legacy I do you want to leave? Most of them don't want to leave legacy. They leave vacancies, not legacies. What kind of footprint? Most of them don't leave footprints. They leave bum prints. But set and hap. Bum prints. So until we give them on what is it that you will do after you vacate the position. And that's where the significant things come up. So when you live a life of significance, it's no longer about you. You've done your part. But your greatness is not going to come from you doing your part. Your greatness is going to come from your spiritual sons and daughters, your academic sons and daughters, your IT sons and daughters. That's where your greatness is, where people say, Dinamo is coaching me right now. Mm -hmm. Dinamo has made an impact in my life. Because leadership is not about impressing people. Leadership is about impacting people. So what is the greatest impact that you as a leader are going to have? Doesn't matter whatever sphere you are in. That's the challenge of the existing leaders. When you exit, what's next? They also need coaches mentors and therapists because some of them cannot dream of them being out of power Let, let's talk about the the last part of therapy yes and then i'll quote uh, your book here choose to change i was watching U president cyril ramaphosa when he was addressing the nation um, when was it on monday correct after he had addressed us the previous day on the lockdown um regulations going forward so i spoke to my brother afterwards and he said hey no the guy looks like he's under a lot of stress and i was as i was watching him i was thinking who cancels the leader the guy well according to what my brother saw looks like he needs some counseling who cancels the leader how important is that part of therapy for leaders, especially leaders during hard times. Thank you so much. I'm going to start from the biblical perspective and I'm going to come straight to our president and other people in leadership. Isn't that amazing that even Moses, who spoke with God, had a counselor called Jethro? Isn't that amazing? David, being anointed king, still served under Saul, was counseled by Jonathan, given the etiquette of the palace. 
Even Jesus himself, 30 years of his life, we don't know what he was doing, but he was being counseled. Even when he started his ministry, Jesus, he was announced by a counselor called John the Baptist. So the question is, as a leader, who speaks into your life? When you go through sad, stress, anxiety, depression, where do you go for counsel? Where do you go to drink fresh water? After the reflection, who speaks into your life? Who do you allow for you to be able to talk about everything, spiritual, social, mental, political? Our president is tired. And yes, you're right. There was no oomph. There was no energy. There was no sense of anything when he spoke up there and the people did not feel driven inspired by what he said and you are right before we criticize him the brother ukatele is much he is tired and the reason this is now the reason we as leaders we neglect ourselves and when you neglect to spend time with you and allow people into your life guess what happens you end up being burnt out so most leaders if the truth be told they are burnt out and the challenge with burnout is this. If you're not careful, it will kill you. You make bad decisions when you're burnt out. You no longer think appropriately and right. And unfortunately, whatever you say has the greater effect and impact in the lives of people. Is that the position we are in right now where bad decisions are being made on the state of unrest that is happening in South Africa because of these things that you've just Correct. Mentioned? You cannot be decisive. If you are burnt out or if you are stressed, there is no way you can be decisive. So what am I saying is, please leaders or potential leaders, learn to understand that you are not the general manager of the world. You also need time. In my book, Choose to Change, I talk about the four quadrants of leadership in the era of productivity. Be productive at work. But realize that you need to learn to live work at work because there are other three quadrants that needs your attention as a leader. Work smart. Some of you are already working hard. Work smart. But number two, you need to be productive as a leader socially. You cannot be a leadership giant while you're a social dwarf. Unabant, you are leading people. So you need to find time to socialize with people. You are a social being. It's okay to say, I don't know. It's okay to say, I need help. As the former chairman of South African Airways, we will tell you, when there is turbulence, when there is a crisis, guess what, in the air, the mask will come out. We say, put the mask on yourself first. It's okay to quarantine and isolate so that you can recharge. If your car battery is dead, how can you jumpstart another person's battery? So work time, social time. The third quadrant as a leader, why you need to be counseled is personal time, me time. You cannot be a public success out there whilst you are a private failure in your life. I repeat, you cannot be a public success out there while you are a private failure in your life. Have me time. Time of free, rewind, replay, reflect. Because the greatest challenge for leadership is to lead you, sir, is to lead you, ma'am. The greatest danger as a leader is to lead yourself. So it's work time, social time, personal time, and the fourth quadrant is family time. It can be your biological family. It can be the people you trust as part of yourself. Be vulnerable. Every leader, every authentic, real leader is vulnerable. And when you do that, you'll be surprised how many people who will be attracted to you, spiritual leaders who will take care of your spiritual side, financial people, psychologists, therapists who will be able to empower you so that you can lead effectively wherever you are. Let me quote you on Choose to Change, a book that you wrote. On the synopsis at the back, it says, he, meaning Dr. Mulapo, believes that our responses determine the level of our success, no matter what challenges we are faced with. Let's touch on that. Our responses as leaders, of course, or as human beings in general, our responses determine the level of our success, no matter what challenges we are faced with. I want to, to encompass this with the issue of being decisive. Yes. This thing called life, life will bring lemons, lemonade, and scars. Please hear me carefully. 
It is not what is happening to you in life that counts or that matters. Things will come. The good, the bad, the ugly. Seasons will come. Winter, spring, summer, or fall. But it is not those things that are happening to you that counts. It is your response as a leader. I repeat, a leader is not made in a crisis. A leader is revealed in a crisis. The Nelson Mandela's of this world. The Mother Teresa of this world. The Lumumbos, Lumumbos of this world. It was, when a crisis came, it revealed already what is them. So how do you respond to the crisis? That will either make you an effective leader or just a leader. A great leader or just a leader. Same thing with just human beings. COVID is coming. How do we respond to that? Unrest in South Africa is already here. How do we respond to that? Do we have a state of emergency? How do the cops, how do the intelligence people? Your response is powerful. I always joke. And it's a true story. I was in a car. A taxi guy nearly hit me. Taxi guy. It's his fault. He's wrong. Mm. But he says to me, Lane Jale. <laughs> it means you dog to me. Mm. I had two choices. I can remind him of his grandmother because I'm a good communicator. <laughs> or I can say something positive. Mm. So my positive thing, I started laying jabulo <laughs> esinayo. It's your response, bro. And the problem with leaders... And they must have diff diffused the situation. Of course, he yeah. laughed. Because yeah. I said, Lenja Bulo. In other words, the happiness. But Lenja means dog. But I turn it around. is the creativity. In any crisis management, they will teach you. Acknowledge the challenge. There's nothing as powerful as a leader when you respond by saying, I feel you. I empathize with you. I understand. It might not be a political thing only. It might also be a poverty thing. It might only be lack of skills. I understand the hatred, the anger, and the violence that is there. But this is how you do it. And your response, how you respond with your words, with the empathy. Listen to this powerful statement, Dinamo. You can never heal the wounds you do not feel. I repeat. You can never heal the wounds you do not feel. So as a leader, how I respond I hear you're hurting. I hear the government, the system, the corporates. While we are a rich country, we have not responded to your needs. We hear you, feel you. Identify yourself with Empathy. people. Empathy. Empathy, which is one cause of emotional intelligence that all leaders must go through. Empathize with the people. Speak their language. Put words that maybe they are having difficulties in sharing with you. Here's what I picked up. Sorry yes. to, to cut you there. From, from the president. He speaks our languages, but yes. I somehow feel that he does not understand what we are going through. Because he's detached. He's and I, detached. And I made an example. Yes. If you a farmer, can speak a language, you to also be a farm. Correct. If you are and you're there in Hrafrenet, if you probably speak Sitros. If you are in Northwest Fenderstop, they probably speak Sitros. But they do not know what you are going through. Correct. They do not have that empathy. And that's the sense I got from, from the president, lacking that element of empathy. And not only just lacking the element of empathy. When you are empathizing, you realize, I don't have the answer. This would have been a wonderful call. Religious leaders, people of different political groups, your local leaders, your community policing forum, whatever. It shows vulnerability that I'm only a man. Even if I'm a change agent, I cannot do this thing. I need you. We don't. We, we, we didn't. We didn't sense that at all. Here's a here's a question that relates to this. I want us to be quick on this one. We don't have much time on the recording platform. I think we left with five minutes. Sure. Uh, subscriber on YouTube says on the channel Gatlejo Gladwin. He asks, please ask him about his opinion on the current leadership issues in the country. I think you've already touched on that. Correct. But the second part of it says, particularly ask him if he thinks our government is manipulated by white monopoly capital or not. He's taking to the political space now. No, no, I'm, I'm coming to the political space. By the way, most of you know I'm close to the president. Mm. He's a friend, but again, if he's doing something wrong, again, I'm not bought by any political group. Wrong is wrong. That's what leadership is all about. And if he can do certain things to improve, we are here to support him, to encourage him. That's what leadership is all about. You must not be against criticism. Criticism is good. But yes, unfortunately, in the context of South Africa, 
white monopoly capitalist is running our country. We have seen with the PPEs, we have seen with Corona stuff that still a lot of our white brothers and sisters still got the chunk, the big chunk of the distribution, the big chunk of doing a lot of vaccines, even today. So there it's not a political thing. It is a fact. It is true that we are still run by few people at the expense of many. Look at the unemployment rate in South Africa. If really we're a so-called rich country, what are we doing to give hope? But not only hope, people can't eat hope. We need to come up with practical things so that particularly our young people, you know my passion, Dinamo. Mm. I don't sleep because of these young people, particularly young, unemployed graduates. Young people, it's fine. Youth at risk, I understand. Yeah. But the passion is these millions of young men and women who have gone through the TVETs, who've gone through colleges, who've gone through universities. They're doing nothing. They're sitting. Baba, that to me is what drives David Malapo. Any deal I make, there must be some young people that we give an opportunity to. But yes, unfortunately, the system right now of South Africa is run by white capitalists who are monopolizing everything. It's a fact. We are finishing off now. Quick bites on solutions that we need to take our continent, our country forward. Three bites not longer than a minute, what do we need to do urgently? Freedom. The word freedom is free to dominate our own situation. Five freedoms. One, political freedom mm -hmm. and a political will. Mm -hmm. Two, psychological stuff. We can't depend on government. We need to do this thing ourselves. We need to be freed from this entitlement Perfect. thing. Number three, academic. Not only just formal, informal, and relevant information technology. technology. Four, economic stuff. All these things are good. But at the end of the day, it's all about money. Izaga, Imbasha, Nyugu. If nothing translates to economy, entrepreneurship, job creation, we're just wasting time. Number five is the spiritual freedom. We believe that when all else is failing, we must hold on to the God of hope, who is the creator of everything. And when we hold on to that hope and faith in Almighty God, all things are possible. Which is why I say I can, you can, together, even during this crisis, we will come victorious.